Okay, good morning. Welcome to History of Animation, Lecture 2, AAD 427. And we've got a couple people who are bounced out, and we'll get them back in. All right, so last time, what we did is that we did um, kind of like uh, what I call um, dead media and, pa and paleolithic um, animation, right? So um, in that case, what we're doing now is the early stuff. And those of you who've had me for Animation 1 have seen a good bit of this. Um, but, you know, we kind of got to go over it again. Uh, just because a lot of you who are in things like uh, VA and graphic design haven't seen this stuff. So, um, I'd say probably on Thursday we're going to get into work that consistently that none of you have seen, which will be great. Um, whatever. So what we're looking at here is that we're looking at early histories, like basically like Windsor McKay to Steamboat Willie. Um, so... You know, some of these are okay. They're they're not the greatest, but um, like humorous phases of funny faces, it's uh, done by uh, James Stewart Blackton. And the thing is, is that it's really kind of the first one. It's done with chalk, and um, kind of the first one done on film. It's not very long, so it's like three minutes. From the Library of Congress in Washington D.C. So I am going to show a couple things. So by the way, for stop motion, for those of you who are in my in my uh, animation one class, you can totally do this.
So there this you go. This has been a presentation. It's um from the Library of Congress in one. All right. So um, we are to 1914 and Gertie the Dinosaur. Um, 1914, Windsor McKay, and it's the earliest film that has a dinosaur in it. And the thing is, is that um, it's kind of interesting because the thing is, is that Windsor would first do, you know, the, uh, would first use the films in front of a live audience to make it look like he's interacting with the dinosaur. So it was kind of, it was, it was kind of interesting. But uh, this is 13 minutes. And um, basically what happens is it, it's this big, big thing about how Windsor McKay is this big famous cartoonist and he break, takes his friends to the, uh, the Natural History Museum and he makes a bet that he can make this animation and then um, he does it. So, you know, kind of like this, um, actually the one thing that's kind of interesting is that uh, the early uh, animators, a lot of them uh, were kind of entrepreneurs. In other words, they saw this as a new business and uh, as a new entertainment business. So, um, so in some of the early animations in that, you'll see a little bit of that. Um, Felix the Cat, and by the way, you can kind of see why. Um, this is this is actually almost a logo of mine. Um, and by the way, for some odd reason, this time I can't see your comments, so um, we'll just uh, talk about things at the end. So what happens is that um, Felix uh, the Cat came out of Australia from Pat Sullivan, and um, you know where I got a little bit of this, so that's that's all right. But the thing is, is the timeline's all the same. So what happens is that um, basically uh, there's some question about whether he or um, Otto Messmer, who was a German American, uh, made the uh, made made the made the character. But the thing is, is that um, Sullivan, you know. Um, created the cartoons, but we're wondering about, you know, whether it's, uh, the, the character was made up by, uh, Mesmer or, or Sullivan, because the thing is, is actually what happens is that there's a, there's a, there's a, um, there's a term that's used a lot in, since the, not, since about the early 2000s called transmedia, and actually, um, Felix the Cat was probably one of the first transmedia platforms um, in which you had cartoons and had uh, toys and ceramics, postcards, and, um, and comics. So in other words, he was like the first, um, you know, cross, uh, he was like the first cross-platform uh, character. And I got to let Zineb in. All right, so and then the thing is, is that Felix became so popular, and actually, um, back in America, uh, one thing that was kind of interesting is that, um, and when I was growing up, and I'm sure like you did, you know, you had old stuff playing during the day, but we had stuff from the I mean, in the in the late '60s and early '70s, we had stuff playing from like the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, and we had stuff like Popeye the Sailor and Felix the Cat, and uh, um, actually there was also another one. Uh, there was also Harvey uh, Harvey Studio, which was really kind of like not really good cartoons, which had like. Baby Huey and Little Audrey, and I'll, I'll show you a couple examples of those. But they're 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 not good cartoons. But um, 
nevertheless, I mean, um, you know, when you're uh, programming for 10-year-old kids, I mean, like Teletubbies, uh, you know, for, for three-year-olds, you know, isn't, actually Teletubbies is really sort of interesting in its own sort of way. But um, never mind. Don't get me going on the Teletubbies. Um, so anybody who has been in my classes in Animation 1 knows Lada Reininger. Um, my only regret is that this summer we're not going to do the uh, and we're not going to do the silhouette animation, um, just basically because of time. But the thing is, is that she was really so influential on so many people. Um, really, watch this documentary. Um, there's two things that uh, you know is that she was so incredibly influential. I mean, on one hand, the first uh, first wo uh, first woman to really make a um, huge impact on. Um, animation. And the one thing is, is that um, I think something that's uh, really important is that uh, women have had a huge role in, um, in animation. Some in places that you would like to see them and some that are less glorified. But um, Lotta Reininger was one of the first um, great um, women in, um, in animation. And so there are a couple things, is that um, basically um, in, um, 19, in 1926, The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, which is uh, based on the uh, Scheherazade and the, uh, the, the um, a couple of stories from Scheherazade and the Thousand and One, um, Thousand and One, um, Thousand and One Nights. Um, that's actually the first feature-length um, animated film, and it's all done with these. Uh, you'll see these these paper uh, silhouettes that she made as they're kind of puppets, and they have their they have lead weights and little joints and that sort of thing. And she cut them, and you will lose your mind. When you see how fast she works with scissors, and she just draws these things out and just boom, 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 and it's absolutely incredible. Um, so um, what happens is that um, this is. Uh, I wonder whether. Yeah, I'll let me see if we can do an example. Let's, let's do. Let's just do a little sample because Prince Ahmed is. Uh, And this is done in 1926. So you get the idea. Um, so this was in 1926. Uh, a little bit of world history. Um, Germany was in a massive depression because of uh, its time during, after World War One, and uh, Latte was uh, given um, just rolls of film stock that she otherwise couldn't have afforded. Um, she was an animator, but uh, she was asked to, um, nobody had ever done anything this length before. And she was asked to, um, she was given this film stock and 
meant to do it. So the other thing is that uh, she also made a, a she also made one of the first optical printers. And really, to tell you the truth, what she did was um, really incredibly um, technically and aesthetically. Um, innovative. And then one of the, um, we're getting down to the last couple pieces that I'm going to talk about. Um, talking about um, art. Um, animation was part of experimental cinema, uh, especially with the Dadas and the Futurists. Um, so I'm giving you a, an example of probably what is uh, one of the most, um, you may look at this and say, well, what is this? But the thing is, is that consider this was 1923 and he used paper cutouts and foil figures and um, take a look at it and see how it how he's making fades in and out. And the thing is, is that um, his colleagues um, were and commented upon Viking doing this piece. And the thing is, is that um, there's also another documentary called the, the, um, um, the Dada Encyclopedia, which if you're into Dada, I really recommend it. It's out online, and I'll actually put the link out. But one thing that they talk about is that they, um, Raoul Hausman, who was another one of the, uh, uh, another famous one of the Dadas, he was talking about um, he was talking about Egeling just really just literally killing himself on this. And um, yeah, it took him a couple years and he did this all by hand and did it frame by frame by frame. And the thing is, is that if you look at this in today's, in today's standards or, you know, you'll get, you, know, you might say, what's this? But if you look at it in terms of this being 1923 and animation, you know, was still beginning and that this was this was an extremely avant-garde piece. So, um, the thing is, it took him a, it took him a couple of years. Uh, it's really kind of amazing. And then, lastly, um, and the reason why I'm stopping here is the fact that um, today's lecture is entirely about. Early animation to the birth of the studios. So what happens is that here we go. Here we have the birth of Walt Disney Studios, Steamboat Willie. And so the thing is, is that um, it's black and white, and it's the. Um, the debut of Mickey Mouse, who started out as Mortimer Mouse, and they were trying to have Mickey be a bit more realistic, and it wasn't working. And so, you know, we came up with Mickey with this, with this, you know, with this characterization, which pretty much exists to this day. Um, but imagine that, 1928, the beginnings of, of, of Mickey Mouse. And there's its primary musical. Um, but the, uh, but the thing is, is that, um, this is like the, the, the third, the third one, but the thing is, it's the first one with sound. So what happens here is that, um, there is another film by, uh, that stars Al Jolson called The Jazz Singer, which was the first one with spoken, um, with spoken dialogue and sound, uh, and that was in uh, nineteen. That was also in nineteen twenty-eight. And one thing that is extremely important to consider about Disney is um, 
Disney has always been extremely technologically innovative. They were one of the first ones to do animated 3D backgrounds. They were the ones to do the first 3D animated film, which you will see, called Tron. By the way, uh, just get ready at the end of at the end of uh, at the end of the semester. The um, the computer graphics day will be um, your viewing will be very long. It'll be probably about four hours. So um, just get ready for that. Because I want you to see Tron and Tron Legacy, which is 1984 and then 2010. And I want you to see kind of like what the difference between computer graphics is from one point to another. And then the other thing is, is that um, it's really just kind of the first one with synchronized music and the soundtrack and all these sorts of things. So... What we did today is that we went from um, phases of humorous faces, you know, down through uh, experimental, uh, experimental, experimental work like um, Wizard McKay. Um, I'm also going to put up another one called uh, Little ne Nemo in Dreamland, which is another uh, McKay piece, and then down through, you know, uh, Eggling and Reininger and down into, um, down into Disney. So, um, so assignments, uh, animator survival kit, pages 18 to 29. I'll have the, uh, I'll have, um, I'll have those out here in about an hour and, uh, new history of animation, 26 to 49. Um, Neither of these are terribly heavy reads, um, so hopefully um, you can just kind of just blast through those pretty quick. Readings: a lot of these are in the um, a lot of these are in the uh, PowerPoint, which will be up right after we get get out uh, get out of here. Um, Rudy the dinosaur, funny faces, Felix the cat. Little Nemo in Dreamland, I don't have that in here. Uh, Symphony Diagonal, Gertie the Dinosaur, Steamboat Willie, and uh, Optional Adventures of Prince Ahmed because uh, a little bit of the content is a little... Um, I'll leave it up to you. It's, it's uh, 1920s um, ideas of... Uh, of uh, of the uh, Arabian Nights. So, anyway, that's that. So, let me get over here and stop this thing.